right. And good morning and welcome. Uh, it's, uh, it's Thursday, we're nearly there at the weekend, and of course we're also into the countdown to Christmas. And that's why we thought we would bring you this topical uh, webinar this morning on, on health and well-being at Christmas. Streaming live from the Ludgate in Skibreen, uh, as well as multiple other locations around the country, now that we're all experts in uh, virtual. Um, this morning's event is presented by the Ludgate Hub in association with our main sponsor, AIB. And to kick off this morning, I'd like to first introduce myself. My name is Gronny O'Keefe, CEO of the, of the Ludgate. Uh, and I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome all of our attendees today. In particular, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our expert panelists this morning and to say a sincere thank you uh, for making the time to attend and contribute to this event. I know you both have very busy lives and uh, it's very much appreciated. For those of you unfamiliar with the Ludgate, uh, we are Ireland's first rural digital hub, um, trailblazing in that sense. We opened in the summer of 2016. We're located in Skibreen, West Cork, and we provide a state-of-the-art 10,000 square foot co-working space with one gigabyte super fast fiber optic broadband connection brought to us by Vodafone and Serial. Our goal in Ludgate is to facilitate the creation of 500 jobs in the West Cork region in, uh, by 2025. So that's an ambitious target. Connection into audio. Oh! What do you do? Oh! Uh, welcome. Can I, can, can I ask you to go on mute? I don't know. <laughs> Always allow us to zoom. Well, we are live, so uh, that's oh, great. We we've we've tested that. Um, just a quick reminder for folks to put on your audio and video mute uh, and stop video functions. That would be great. But delighted you're here. Um, so I'll just carry on there telling you a little bit about Ludgate. We have an impressive track record in reaching our goal of job enablement in the region. Uh, we've done that uh, as a function of creating this fantastic co-working space and uh, that has embraced many different types of members, you know, ranging from consultants to sole traders to startups, scaling organizations and second site companies. And today we've facilitated the creation of 130 new jobs in West Cork and these jobs have emerged from a wide range of sectors. Our long-term vision is to make West Cork a centre of excellence for organisations, allowing them to prosper and thrive at a global level from a rural location. Today's event is Health and Wellness at Christmas, and this is a subject that is extremely important, even now more so given the current climate of the pandemic that we all find ourselves in. And here in the Ludgate, we're delighted to be launching our members programme this month, and this programme will offer our members many different types of support, such as mentoring, lunch and learns, networking opportunities, and of course, uh, uh, mental health and wellness through our social club. Um, that social club, you know, we're starting off with something nice and warm, our Feel Good Friday, which is essentially cake and coffee, celebrating each other's small victories, walking and running, book clubs, things like that. And we're all very well aware of promoting well-being in the workplace, how it can help prevent stress and create a positive <laughs> working environment where individuals and organizations can thrive. So I'm delighted this morning to welcome our expert speakers, Priscilla Lynch and Fiona O'Donnell. Both are fabulous West Cork ladies, active in the community and role models uh, we can learn from. I'm hugely inspired by their work and on a personal level by their friendship. Priscilla is currently head of Service for Health and Wellbeing in Cork and Kerry and has been in that role since 2017. She has worked in a number of acute and community services, including pediatrics, medical personnel, oral health, social inclusion, community work, mental health services, and health and well-being. Fiona works in West Cork as a performance nutritionist and coach, and she is the founder of the Sustain series of education and habit coaching programs, and works predominantly online with her clients. And Fiona is a triathlete, and currently a Triathlon Ireland advocate, and a promoter of women in sports. So both hugely inspirational women, and thank you ladies for joining us this morning. Uh, the format of this morning will be more of a chat, you know, fireside chat, sometimes people use that language. Uh, however, we will have time for Q&A. So if you're familiar with uh, the chat function, feel free to submit your questions via the chat um, function and we pose it to the experts. You should see it in the three dots. Uh, if you bring up there, you'll see what's available for you. Um, so I'm now going to turn it over to you ladies to introduce yourself a little further. Priscilla, uh, can I turn to you first, please, uh, and ask you to give us a little insight into your role uh, as Head of Service for Health and Wellbeing for Cork and Kerry. 
Great. Grani, thanks very much and good morning to you and to everybody else. I'm absolutely delighted to be here at your webinar this morning. Um, and thank you for the wonderful introduction. Um, as a head of uh, health and wellbeing for Cork and Kerry, um, predominantly my role is around implementing Healthy Ireland um, for the population within Cork and Kerry. Um, so you'll be aware that um, uh, our government in Ireland um, in 2015, I think, acknowledged that as a population or health was not at a level that it required to be. Um, so they um, thankfully um, agreed a collective position in terms of delivering Healthy Ireland for the entire population. So um, myself and my team, our main job is, I suppose, connecting, collaborating and instigating change to improve people's overall well-being across Cork and Kerry. And that's kind of broken into three main areas. The first being the reduction of chronic disease. Um, the second, wide population health for everybody. And the third, um, helping our own staff within the health service executive to improve their health and well-being. Um, we're really good as healthcare workers in telling everybody else how to be well and how to live well. We're not so good actually at taking that on board ourselves. So our work is predominantly broken into those three elements. So really excited to be here this morning and to talk to you about well-being during the Christmas period. Um, and I know myself and Fiona are very much are dovetailed in terms of discussion. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Priscilla. Fiona, can I ask you now to share with us your day-to-day -day work as a coach and nutritionist, please? Oh, you're on mute. There we go. Yeah. And that was such a that was such a fabulous nugget of information. I just gave you, and now you never know what it was. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say that I love what Priscilla just said about um, uh, we all know what we're supposed to do, but it's actually it's actually putting that into action is uh, is what's really important because it doesn't matter what your thoughts are in your head unless you action them they'll never happen. And that's, I suppose, what my main role is. I come from a background in cardiology and diagnostic um, and uh, interventional cardiology. And uh, I went from, I suppose, uh, knowing how to test for things and how to treat them into wanting to help with prevention. So in 2004, I moved into prevention by, by doing night classes in fitness and health. I became qualified as a nutritionist in 2012. And uh, from there, I've kind of gone through different processes of um, learning about education, learning about delivering education programs so that I suppose that I can deliver to my clients. Uh, it's this whole teach a man to fish concept as opposed to the give a man a fish concept. So it's about uh, helping people to find food and find activities that they can integrate into their day to day and action them uh, to, to live a, an improved lifestyle for reaching their own goals and their own targets. So uh, I think um, a mix of nutrition education and support are the two things that marry really well for me uh, in my delivery of, of service to clients. So uh, that's what I do. I educate and support and uh, mostly 99% online. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Before I forget, I just want to uh, let everybody know that we are recording this morning's event and it will be available on our website over the coming days if you want to um, you don't catch all the nuggets this morning, uh, you can certainly catch them on the website. Later on. Um, I'm going to ask Elma now to uh, show our video, our little brief video, which will uh, tee us up nicely to our, our chat. Did you know there are things we can do every day to improve our mental health and well-being? Connect. Connecting is about building and strengthening relationships with the people around you. We can do this by spending meaningful time with people each day, arranging a day out with friends, having lunch with someone you work with, or joining a sports team in your local community. By giving time to these relationships, we feel happier and more secure, giving us a better sense of purpose. Be active. Look for ways to be active every day. Find something you enjoy. It doesn't have to be a marathon, but something that suits your fitness and mobility. Cycling, gardening, walking and dancing are all ways that we can get more active. Being active every day causes changes in our brain which can positively affect our mood. Take notice. To take notice is to be present in the here and now. Pay attention to the world around you, nature, people, your thoughts and feelings. Becoming more aware of the present moment can help us enjoy the world around us and understand ourselves better. 
Keep Learning. Keep Learning is about learning new skills and information about topics that interest us. We can keep learning by trying a new recipe, signing up for a nighttime course, fixing that broken bike, or taking on a new responsibility in work. Learning can boost our confidence and self-esteem, help build a sense of purpose, and help us connect with others. Give. Giving is about small acts of kindness for other people. You could make someone a cup of tea, sign up for volunteering, or offer to help someone you know with a project. You could just ask a friend or someone you work with how they are and really listen to the answer. Giving back to others can create positive feelings and help us feel more satisfied with life. Each of the five ways have been shown to make a positive difference in how we feel and live our life. By including these simple actions every day, we can improve our mental health and well-being. Fantastic. Look, I think that sets it up nicely. Some simple tips for us to uh, initiate our conversation. Priscilla, so I might just hand it to you first to talk to us about the simplicity of those tips and how we can leverage those to help us uh, through this period. I suppose there are just five ways to your overall well-being. So what we emphasize is the connectivity that we all need, the person-to-person -person engagement in terms of being active. You know, you can move your body, you move your mood. Um, and like there are loads of simple ways in terms of how we can achieve that, you know, staying you know, fit for life. You can do a couch to 2K, you can join a club. Um, taking notice, and um, you see there in the video, it's just being aware, being aware of your own emotions, your own feelings, and um, being aware of what others feel, uh, particularly at Christmas time. Christmas time um, can be a time that um, individuals have very different emotions. For some, it's very joyous, and, and for others, it can be very difficult. It can be a sad time of year. So just yeah. being... Exactly. Oh, Priscilla, you've gone on mute there, and your video's gone as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Am I back? Your your voice is back. Uh, your beautiful face is missing. Oh. Can you back again. <laughs> uh, I can hear you. We will carry on while you sort out your video there, and uh, maybe uh, one of the guys can give you a hand with that. Perfect. Um, Just telling, it's telling me it's running. Um. So I, I was saying in terms of taking notice, looking after your own well-being, um, you know, there are wonderful resources there in terms of minding, minding your well-being, um, your mental health. Uh, so I think, again, just people being aware for themselves in terms of where they're at. Um, thinking particularly, I suppose, we're focusing on Christmas today, so it may be a particularly stressful time. And um, it's really important that you kind of check in with yourself you know, um, these things becoming more difficult for me. Um, mm -hmm. Am I am I allowing the pressure to build? Um, a way to address that would be, you know, talk to a friend, um, take a step back, um, you know, be honest with yourself in terms of what you actually can do. Um, learning something new. So, you know, this really good idea there in terms of switching off and tapping into creativity as, as we would have seen in the video. And give, give is really important. So, you know, give, give yourself time, give yourself focus, um, give yourself effort and most importantly give yourself kindness and if you can nourish yourself you can certainly eat to nourish um, everybody else surrounding you so there are just five simple ways in terms of people can look after their overall well-being fantastic Priscilla thank you and Fiona I know you um, you know adopt some simple strategies as well perhaps you can add your your thoughts on that from a coach and nutritionist perspective yeah sure I mean I love what um, Priscilla was saying there about connection and it's it's so true that you know, this whole concept of social distancing where we are at the moment, I think it should never have been called social distancing. It should have been called physical distancing because the social element of, of what we do every day is so, so important to us. And when it comes down to being active, um, realistically, it's far easier to be active and to be motivated around being active if you're looking forward to it. We don't always uh, really look forward to going out on a dark evening in the middle of winter potentially in the rain or with the potential for rain. But I know in my own circumstance, I'll get a, a text from one of the girls. Does anybody want to walk? Gen ger generally at the moment, it's in the dark. So we're using our, our phones to kind of uh, guide the way. Uh, but we always end up having a bit of crack. So, and again, um, just uh, I suppose mirroring what Priscilla was saying there about um, being in the moment. And I think one of those five tips was to be present in the moment. And something that stands out for me, and I always notice it when we do our, our training camps during the summer, is 
you are always 100% in the moment without any effort when you're laughing. So think about that for a moment. If you're laughing and if you're having fun, you can do nothing else, only, only laugh and be in that moment. So um, having that at the forefront of your mind, having fun this Christmas and not making it all about making sure the turkey's ready on time. You know, no one cares if they have to wait a half an hour and if they do send them home. Um, you know, so just trying to put the stress element to the side a little bit and having fun uh, is, is uh, really important. I think one of the things that we're hearing, you know, through the news and through our own circles is, um, you know, motivation levels and social stimulation. Uh, they're all, they've plummeted. And how, how, how do we resolve that? How do we uh, get that moving again? And I suppose we all saw Joe Wicks uh, in the first lockdown. Certainly I did. I was trying to get my kids doing it every morning and they were allergic. No disrespect to Joe. I think it's amazing. Um, <laughs> but they were all allergic by day five. Uh, you know, he's a bouncy bunny. Sometimes that can be overwhelming. We don't need bouncy bunny all the time. So Fiona, maybe you could take that one as to maybe some gentle ways of reintroducing stimulation. Yeah, of course. I think, I think we do need to ask ourselves occasionally, is this working for me? Because we, we think about what we should be doing and we say, okay, yeah, oh, Joe Wicks is on. Everyone's doing Joe Wicks, so I better do Joe Wicks. And you're going around your living room going, oh my God, do I really want to be doing this? This is driving me in, you know, spare. Well, what do you actually want? Do you want to be outdoors? Uh, do you want to be connecting with somebody? And if you can pair what you should be doing with what you enjoy doing, that's going to offer you a route to getting out and doing something. I love being outdoors. Uh, my kids maybe don't enjoy it so much and you know you have that situation where you're kind of dragging them by the ankles yeah. uh, to come on we we'll go for a walk on the beach well okay we'll go for a walk on the beach but we'll stop and, and I'm sure you know in Ichidani there's uh, the option to get hot chocolates so yeah. that is the lure <laughs> for my crew um, so pairing something exactly. you kind of maybe don't want to do with something that's going to incentivize the situation exactly. and for me Hot chocolate is definitely incentive. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the social, the social connection element. So if I'm meeting a friend, that incentivizes me. I think we, we have this notion that motivation is something that comes from the clouds and you either have it or you don't. Yeah. But realistically speaking, we have to make things as easy as possible, as obvious as possible, and as attractive as possible. Yeah. And if you've never run before, going out for a 5K run is not attractive. So yeah. what can you do? Maybe it's five minutes out your front door and five minutes back. If you can break it down into the simplest, smallest pocket, uh, you might start to enjoy it. Make it easy. So, uh, yeah, that would the be... The building blocks. Certainly, you know, your hot chocolate, bribe. I had to get my kids out <laughs> from down in Baltimore this weekend just to smell the sea. Uh, of course, I'm in plan, we smell the sea there, but, you know, <laughs> different smell. And yeah. so it was pizza in the dry breeze, which is something I haven't been to for nearly a year. Uh, maybe we were there once during summer, but it was just... That was the bribe. Oh, and we also went into Peter Sullivan's toy shop in Skibreen, which, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. beautiful, simple pleasures. I got my way, they got their way. Yeah, Priscilla, exactly. what about you? What do you, what do you propose in that regard? Um, I, I suppose I would concur in terms of what Fiona has just said. It is the small things that will make the big difference. Um, and it is, I suppose, it's what you like to do. Um, because if, in terms of motivation, there's nothing worse than trying to motivate yourself to do something that you don't want to engage with. So I think it's really clever to have that kind of hook to encourage other members of the family to, who don't want to engage. Um, I do think that we, we are in a particular difficulty this year um, because, like Fiona said, unfortunately, I think the language that we've used, particularly for COVID, around um, social distancing has been the wrong language it should be physical distancing so I think you know we need to be very creative how we're going to engage with each other particularly over the holiday period so you know getting out for the walks taking your your flask of tea or coffee outdoors uh, most importantly doing doing what you enjoy um like definitely I love to get out I love to go walking um is there some evenings that I dread it? Absolutely. Um, do I feel better when I come home? Certainly. Mm -hmm. And um, I do treat myself with the awards, say, well done, Priscilla, you know, and, and have something nice. And that might, for me, be, be purchasing a new pair of shoes at the end of the, at the, end of the month saying, well yeah. done, I've achieved A or B. So I think it's what we like. We need to think about what we like to engage with mm -hmm. and build it in gently. And step by step, incrementally, then, you know, you can improve your overall well-being.
Um, and I think you grow to enjoy stuff as well. Um, and, and certainly, yeah. I think in terms of you, you definitely um, start to enjoy the, um, the motivation side of it. I think that will just happen um, ad hocly um, by virtue of the fact that you're engaging in something. Priscilla, we've talked a little bit there about, you know, self-motivation to stimulate ourselves and to bring the, the, the family entourage with us. Um, can I ask you about uh, well-being at work and what kind of pro pro programs you found to be effective that we can all potentially replicate? I mean, I love the concept of the outsource, you know, open source where we're all learning from each other and where we can copy and paste effectively. So I'd love to hear about some of the programs you guys are doing within the HSC that we could all learn from here this morning. Yeah, we have, um, we have a plethora of activities depending on the setting or depending on the discipline of staff, etc. But I suppose most importantly, what we've done is it's guided directly by the, the staff themselves in terms of what they want. So um, we have well-being newsletters that the staff produce. Um, we have, we've recently done um, a virtual Atlantic Ireland walk. Um, so that's been, that's been really good fun. We do a steps, we do a steps to health challenge. Um, we do, instead of your cake and, and um, break on, on Friday, um, we yeah. do a fruity Friday. We do a, we do a fruity Friday. Really <laughs> <I love it. laughs> we, we, we actually had, um, we ha had a huge cake culture within the health service and um, people are very, very generous and um, yeah. they're very kind to us and they bring in a lot of chocolates and a lot of cakes. Oh. So we actually decided to do a Fruity Friday, which has gone down really, really well and people really enjoy that and they've got very creative in terms of bringing it in. Um, so we've, we've created space as well for staff. So I think really important, um, one of the most key elements for us as healthcare workers was to encourage staff to take their breaks to take them their morning break, to take a lunchtime break, you know, particularly people that are doing very long shifts and that they get an opportunity to engage with colleagues and not talk about work at their breaks was really, really important. Um, unfortunately, we had got into a culture where people were eating on the go. Um, so we're, we're trying to actually abolish that and we're trying to create groups as well where people do things collectively. Um, so there's a wonderful charity that staff um, in the Health Service Executive in Court and Kerry set up called SHARP. And so we actually do a lot of work on an annual basis in terms of providing support. So that's, that's medical supports abroad, etc. So, um, and every week there's something innovative and new coming up. We're, we do quite a lot around minding your well-being. Um, so we have um, mindfulness classes and um, we have um, sitting yoga, dancing yoga, laughing yoga um, and quite a lot of social activities that we're starting to build up outside of the work environment so people get to know each other as real individuals as opposed to just a particular discipline um, with a particular job within the health service and I think that's really important. So what is resonating there with me is some of the examples you're giving are, are programs that actually can be permeated through any walk of life. And so you talked about the initiative there to walk Ireland virtually um, or whatever the right labeling is for that. My kids go to the Gale School in Plan. They have a similar thing. Uh, I think it was more, they did that last summer, but at the moment what they're doing, which I think is gorgeous, is for the month of December, they don't get any homework, but instead of homework, it's replaced by an act of kindness that they have to do daily. And then they have to log Perfect. that uh, in their diary you know, Monday is a random act of kindness to an elderly person. Tuesday is a random act of kindness to their family. Wednesday might be for themselves. Now, my little fella loves movies, so his, his, his random act of kindness to himself happens to be a movie every week. But, um, you well, know, if they're, if they're calling granny as the two grannies as well, like that's beautiful as well. So I think those little programs, uh, it's forming the habit around them and adopting them not just in the workplace, but in whatever whatever way of life we're in, you know? Do you know what, you, you're probably seeing a little bit of that in your walk of life as well, are you? Yeah, and actually it's, it's all that, but it's the community that that creates as well, I think, um, Grania. Like, so you have in the school, the example of the school, so my son is, is in the same school and they're doing that, but it's, I, I think it's the way the teachers are bringing them together then and uh, getting them to read out what they've done. So everybody's looking at what everybody else is doing, gaining ideas, yes. You know, yeah. there's a little bit of, oh, that was a good idea. And again, with the with the Walking Ireland efforts, I know I have seen those, like there's been the Walk the Wild Atlantic Way efforts. Nice. There's been, I'll be mm. starting a program with clients in January where we're going to do over the space of 12 weeks, a marathon. And it's for people who have never kind of basically going from zero to hero. Um, 
where we'll start with 10 minutes. It's, a, it's a called the Just One Mile program. So you're giving 12 minutes of your day for movement. And in those 12 minutes, we count up the steps and eventually people will get to their 26.2 miles. But it is the sense of community. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's really been lacking. And it's what we're craving mm -hmm. is that sense of community. And I think the, the greatest uproar coming up to Christmas was the fact that there that people were told, well, you know, you can't hug now. Jerry has to be out in the kitchen peeling the spuds or he has to bring the bowl of spuds into the living room and he can do them in there. I mean, like, have you ever been in someone's house at Christmas? Who's going to the living room to peel the potatoes? Like, so it's that it's that sense of gathering. Um, and actually, that is what creates motivation when you have that sense of gathering. And I love what Priscilla said about um, getting to know people as people, as opposed to, um, oh, that's the orthopedic uh, registrar now. And uh, that's, that's Mary. She sits at the desk in such and such a department, as opposed to, oh, that's Mary. Jesus, did you see what she did last week? She covered 20K last week and her walk. Isn't she brilliant? Yes. Ask her, will we meet up with her during the week? And getting to know people like that and creating, uh, creating that community leads to pockets of people getting together, uh, socially, uh, physically distanced. distanced and safely, of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, and uh, just chatting to Priscilla during the week, I was telling her that um, two of my clients uh, are both actually cocooning. Uh, they're living in Dublin, but what they do in the evening when the streets are quiet is there's a route that they take. They walk on opposite sides of the streets, but they have their headphones in and they have the chats in their 5K loop or their 4.5K yeah. loop that they do. And they have the chats across the road. So all these things that are just getting people, you don't have to, you don't have to climb Mount Everest. It yeah. might be that you spend 15 or 20 minutes just going for a stroll. But again, it's back to that pairing, uh, something you're going to really enjoy with something else that you don't quite, you know, have the grow for yet. But yes. by pairing them together, you just start to love both of them. You start to crave them, developing right. those those connections in the brain mm -hmm. that tell you when I walk, I feel good. So, um, so we've, we've spoken a little bit about movement and the importance of movement and exercise and, uh, phys you know, physical distance, social distance. But I want to talk a little bit on food now, because I know that's very much an anxiety inducing theme around the Christmas period. And I know myself, I'm not a mince pie girl, which I think is fantastic just because it saves, because I do love the chocolate and the cheese. But unfortunately, Duns have introduced chocolate chips into the mince pie, and that's just like set me over the edge entirely. So unfortunately, I'm not mince pies. They're back on the list for me. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Claudia. You're lost to us. You're lost to us. There's nothing yeah. I can do. I give up. I'm leaving, I'm leaving the meeting. <laughs> Okay, so what are your tips to help me? Okay, so I, the what I would be saying to you is there is a very, very short window that you're going to be able to enjoy chocolate chip mince pies. And I would say enjoy them. I think, I think this, uh, this notion of restriction, and actually research is telling us now that the more you restrict prior to a big event, the more you tend to shift in the opposite direction and just go hell for leather. So my, my advice to you, Grania, would be to enjoy what you're enjoying. Don't restrict them. Ideally, don't have seven or eight of them for breakfast. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the, whole, it's the whole idea of everything in moderation. If, if I was to say to you, okay, Grania, going forward for the month of January, you actually can't have any rice. You'd probably be thinking about stir fries and rice for the whole month of January. Even yeah. if you only eat rice twice a month now, you'd be saying, oh, I can't have it. It's all yeah. that would be on your mind. And this is how restriction works. And this is why this concept of, you know, dieting doesn't work. Mm. The more you restrict yourself against something, the more you're inclined to think about it and feel that you have this mindset of, okay, well, when I get there, I better have as much as I can because I can't have it anymore. And it perpetuates this idea of food guilt. Jesus, you want to have seen me yesterday. I had three of those chocolate chip mince pies. I mean, I went really off the wall. Um, one of my clients yesterday, but anyway. <laughs> one of my clients said to me the other day, um, Fiona, I really fell off the wagon last week. And I kind of went to the wagon. I, I didn't bring any wagon. What wagon are you talking about? There is no wagon. Yeah. You can you can have your cake and eat it too. As I used to always say, what is the point in having a cake if you can't eat it? enjoy things at Christmas that's what Christmas is there for for a little bit of excess enjoy it because 
in January, make no mistake, everything is going to go back to normal. The holidays will be over eventually and you'll be back to being at work, you know, being at home, trying to juggle, working from home and running around after kids. You'll be out walking the dog. All those mince pies will stop being sold in done stores mm. and, you know, <laughs> things will get back to normal. Yeah. Uh, and actually, I, I, there's a great analogy of, um, you know, the, the money in the bank. OK, so you have your weekly wages and this is what you're eating every day year in year out and then you decide you get your christmas bonus and that goes into savings okay so you have your savings which is your little bit of extra your little bit of extra fluff and over the course of the next couple of months that savings goes on spending in the sales uh booking a holiday which i have no doubt we'll all be doing in january because it's just going to happen i'm trying to be positive about it um but over the course of a couple of weeks or a couple of months those savings dwindle and it's the same idea we tend to add a little bit of uh, huggability around Christmas time around summer holidays and gradually it diminishes because things go back to normal and we end up moving more yeah, so I used to call it the Christmas cuddle it's now the COVID cuddle but you know um, <laughs> Priscilla I'm going to turn to you now for a moment and uh, we when we were chatting uh, you know a few days ago about this event we spoke a little bit about uh, the value of being kind and asking our neighbours, our you know partners, our colleagues, are you okay? Can you touch on that for a little and the importance of that? Yeah, I suppose I really liked what you said, Grania, in terms of, of the school initiative that's there around kindness instead of homework. That's gorgeous. Um, and one of the initiatives we have in work is Kindness Works Here. And, um, you know, a lot of people frowned on that in the beginning, but actually the impact of it has been huge. Um, so I think, uh, you know, certainly a positive aspect of COVID is that as a society, particularly here in Ireland, we are actually a very kind population. We do look after each other. And we've seen that in terms of the huge volunteer support that's come out. Um, I think it's really, really important that we nourish ourselves. And um, so as Fiona said, you know, Christmas is time for eating and for drinking and and not for the guilt trip. Um, so by nourishing our bodies, um, be it through you know eating and having your physical activity or enjoyment outdoors, that actually has a really positive impact on your overall well-being, um, emotional well-being. Um, and I think that um, we just need to take its stock and really listen to people when we say, "Are you okay?" and listen to their response and give people time. Christmas, um, as we said earlier on, is a very joyous time for some people. It is very lonely for other people. So as you know, with the current restrictions, there is recommendations around bubbles. But we have to bear in mind that some people are living on their own and there is nobody within that bubble, only themselves. So I think even by us reaching out to somebody, um, you know, Christmas is a time for giving. It doesn't necessarily mean we have to buy presents. Um, we could actually ring a neighbour who's living on their own or we know somebody who who's particularly vulnerable this time of year. And that, um, that hand out of kindness, uh, you know, you will receive a, a weight of gold in terms of, of the um, output from that that you will receive yourself. So it's really important in terms of, um, you know, that giving element around kindness as well. I suppose just on that note, I can imagine one of the potential anxieties in relation to being very proactive in that regard, depending on, uh, your own mental state is sometimes when you ask somebody are they okay it, it is a bit of a Pandora's box it can open a door and uh, a little bit of sympathy can trigger a huge amount of outpouring of emotion so Priscilla would you, would you have some tips as to how to go about that and navigate that? Yeah, certainly. I think, look, at the end of the day, it comes down to a holistic approach. I mean, we're all human. Um, so, uh, you know, what I, I worked in, as you said earlier on, for 10 years in mental health. And um, when people are emotionally distressed, it's the community, it's the, it's the human contact, it's the listening ear. Um, most of us just want somebody to listen to us when we're actually finding ourselves in, you know, in a level of anxiety or a level of distress. And obviously, of course, there's an abundance of supports that are there that are, you know, widely disseminated out. But when it comes down to brass tacks, each and every one of us has an off day. And um, what do we want? 
We just want somebody to talk to, be that we go home and we speak to our loved ones or we ring a friend. Um, so it's the very small little things, just picking up the phone, having a cup of tea with somebody, if that's if that's viable. Um, and, um, and certainly I think it's just that reach out, it's that listening. Now, if you're feeling particularly vulnerable yourself, you know you're possibly not in a position that you can engage with somebody who is, okay. you know, maybe particularly sad or is in a, in a grieving position. So I suppose once you know yourself and you think yourself, well, how am I? Exactly. How am I? You're, I actually, you're feeling strong. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Before you engage in other people's feelings. Yeah. Um, and it's not about what I can change, um, but it's more around giving um, somebody the opportunity to, uh, to have that conversation, just to have the conversation. And if you are really concerned about somebody, obviously, of course, there, you know, you can do the appropriate signposting. But sir, in my experience, the majority of people just want somebody to speak with just to have the conversation. Yeah, exactly. Um, look, we're, we have a few minutes left, so what I thought I might do for the last few minutes is ask both of you, you know, from um, your own ways, uh, how you'll be managing through the festive period. But before we do that, we have a question um, that's come in uh, from one of the attendees in relation to the importance of setting goals and, uh, and any tricks for sticking with them. Fiona, as a, as an, uh, a sports person, I think I want to throw that one to you. Yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, I think setting goals is wonderful, okay? It gives us a target, but um, I always say that it's, it's not just the goal we should be focusing on because sometimes we get a little bit tunnel vision on that goal. Um, so what I always, uh, kind of a strategy that I always use with clients is I say, rather than setting goals, uh, picture your identity. So if you were describing yourself in the, third, in the third person to somebody else now, how would you do it about yourself today? And then think of yourself where you want to be. So it might be that, uh, you know, you have a, a target of a race you want to do. Well, um, how, how would you identify yourself then later on? And what's the difference between the two? Then if you can identify the skills you require to get there. I know for me at one stage, it was learning to swim. I couldn't put my face in the water. And I wanted to say, I wanted to be able to call myself a swimmer. So my goal was to learn how to swim. And I had to look at all the steps along the way in order for me to to get there and it was getting over my fear of water well how did I achieve that I desensitized over a long period of time I practiced I got a coach and and um, you know so all these things had to happen but they allow you to have all these very very tiny pockets of um of, of small goals to achieve so in terms of goals my biggest advice on that would be to make them as achievable as possible. Uh, create small goals that you know you can definitely achieve. So as opposed to say, if you want to learn how to run, as opposed to saying to yourself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run five days a week now once the 1st of January lands. If you can say on Sunday evening, on Monday, I'm going to jog for 10 minutes. If I end up jogging for half an hour, wonderful. You know, so create something you know you can definitely achieve and if you do a little bit more great and keep your goals small keep them frequent and try and stick with them consistently i love it thank you priscilla do you do you have anything to add on that before i go deep and ask you how you're going to cope for the next 12 days in the run of christmas and the period after I suppose just to, to follow on from Fiona, it is really the small things make a big difference and something that resonated with me a while ago that Fiona mentioned was about one of her clients saying, fall off the wagon. Every day is a new day. So, you know, don't beat yourself up. Um, if you have the chocolate chip, mince pie, cookies, whatever, you know, tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow is a new day. So it's the small changes, certainly, that will make the big difference. Um, and I think, um, you know, just avoid the guilt. Um, avoid the guilt and be nice, be kind to yourself. It's really, really important. Very good. I suppose we, before I do the closing remarks, I'm going to ask you for your top three tips for managing the next few weeks. Fiona, I'll give that to you. Um, I think give yourself permission to just be. Uh, and I, I love the fact that somebody asked there about goal setting. Um, it's wonderful to have goals, but we don't have to be working at them every single day. So being kind to yourself and being kind to myself and saying, well, you know what, today I don't need to, I don't need to achieve my, my biggest, baddest goal. 
today I'm just going to actually sit on the couch, watch a rerun of Grey's Anatomy, uh, have my glass of red wine at two o'clock in the afternoon with my mince pie. And, um, you know, and like, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to spend time with my family. So I'm actually planning those days as well. And I think that's very important because we can get caught up in the looking ahead, you know, and, and kind of advancing on ourselves, really. Um, the other thing is the two minute rule. I'm, I'm a firm believer in the two minute rule. What can you do? Uh, what can you do for two minutes, which generally for me ends up being four or seven minutes um, to to be kind to your future self? So I know if I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed, you know, things are getting really busy. I'm, you know, 10 minutes out from a, a call with Ludgate. One of the horses has broken out at the stable. One of the kids isn't feeling well. I, I do have to kind of say, OK, I actually need two minutes. And one of the best things I discovered uh, to do was to go in, lie on my bedroom floor, hard surface, and just bend my knees and go through a couple of breaths. And that's it. Take a breath in, extend the breath out for as long as you can. And it sounds so airy fairy. It sounds, you know, well, look, I mean, I'm really stressed today. That's not going to work for me. But actually, it really, really does. And then you find yourself doing it three or four times a day and you're going, OK, maybe I need to, <laughs> maybe I need to cough on here. But, um, you know, just having that moment to breathe is is so worthwhile. Um, and the other thing is to check in with yourself. And I think it was mentioned earlier and say, well, what do I actually need today? Do I need to not train? Do I need to not go for a walk because I'm really tired? Or do I need to just put my wellies on and go for a walk cross country or go down to the beach, even though the wind is lifting? Um, maybe that's what you need. So asking yourself what you need and giving it to yourself because we can't pour from an empty cup. So, um, and then sometimes what we actually need is a really good plate of food, nourishment. We need to give ourselves a day off the wine and a day off the mince pies and we can feel better from that as well. You know, so we'll take it one step at a time now, Grania. Don't be worried. Don't be worried. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell what you're doing. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. Priscilla, what are, do you have three top tips that you can leave us with? Um, I would say that, um, you know, due to the last, you know, past year, um, we've all moved at a very pace in terms of being connected digitally, electronically, etc. So for me, certainly an element to switch off. I know we won't be able to do that for the full period, but definitely um, a time to just actually switch off um, and, you know, get back get back to nature, get back to creativity. Um, I'm very fortunate, as are the two of you, to live in a very beautiful part of the world. Um, for me, certainly, there's nothing better than, you know, smelling the sea air, taking a photograph of it, getting on it, swimming in it, walking along it. Um, it just recharges my battery. So connecting with nature is really, really important for me. Um, and the third thing I would say is connectivity. So person to person connection. And I know that can be really difficult. So some family members we won't see at Christmas time. Um, for me, it'll be, you know, um, it will be switching back on and getting on, um, getting on Zoom and putting on Spotify with, uh, with a family member in another part of the country and having a good old bop around the kitchen and just forgetting about everything and being in the moment, enjoying it. So I think person to person connection, uh, switching off, and getting back to nature are, are three really, really important factors. And I would, I would absolutely agree with Fiona. Nurture yourself is really, really important. Um, it certainly is a time for that. Nurture yourself, your body and your mind. Love it. Thank you both so much. I think what, what is sticking with me from both of you and from obviously you both have different backgrounds and perspectives is being gentle and kind to yourself first and foremost and forgiving of yourself. And that then will empower you and enable you to help out and uh, reach out to others. So uh, very, very powerful words, ladies, this morning. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you, Garani. Merry Christmas. Uh, thanks, Merry Christmas. Are we allowed to say that? Is it just I know, I know. <laughs> I suppose just, you know, as we wrap up what I'll say um, in relation to what we have here in Ludgate, we know that folks who are working from home uh, were struggling in the home environment in that regard. You know, we are open. We're open uh, with social distance in mind. There is space. We obviously have opened up private office space with our uh, expansion recently into Ludgate at Fields, where we have individual private offices for either one, a one person office or a two person office. We obviously have a co shared space here as well as private offices within the Ludgate Hub, the old bakery in Townsend Street. So we are here to help. 
uh, you know, we are a social enterprise. Our role here is to enable the community. Uh, we know you need to continue working. We know the economy continues, uh, needs to continue despite uh, the challenges we're all facing. So we would love to be in a position to, to help you in that regard. So on that note, uh, I'm going to sign off and uh, hope to see you again at one of our we uh, monthly webinar series going forward. So um, looking forward to a really happy 2021. We're going to get the vaccine from whomever. Uh, we're going to have new jobs emerging around West Cork and we're going to have a happy and healthy lifestyle. For us. Okay, have a Christmas, everyone. Take care. Hello. Bye. Thanks, Grania. Bye. Bye. Bye, Fiona. Bye, Priscilla. Thanks. Bye, Jake.